Hey, hello and welcome to this new episode of the Success Grade podcast with your host Hussein Talib. As you know, I have just testing, been testing in you with live streaming. So this is the third episode I am testing live through with the Success Grade podcast. And my guest today in this episode is Kevin Palmieri. He's the founder and the co-host of the Next Level University and podcast. Kevin, welcome to the Success Grade podcast. Thank you for having me, my friend. I'm excited to chat and let's hope this live streaming thing all goes off without a hitch. That's the, that's the goal. <laughs> awesome. 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 <laughs> he, in, on success, Grid, we are, our goal is to educate and inspire people to always strive to raise their standards in their business and their life. We want them to build a business they are proud of. So Kevin, tell us a little bit about your story. Why did you start Next Level University and the podcast? Yeah, I uh, when I was 25, Hussein, I, I had what everybody would consider success. I had a high paying job. I had a beautiful girlfriend. I had a new apartment. I was in really good shape and I was very miserable. I mean, everybody thought I was successful, but I wasn't. I didn't feel successful. I didn't feel happy. I didn't feel fulfilled. And one day my girlfriend came to me and she said, Kevin, I want to move across the country. So we lived in New Hampshire in the United States she wanted to move to California. And mm. I remember I gave her every reason in the world why she shouldn't do it. But the biggest reason for me was I was afraid to be left behind. That was the biggest reason is I was afraid she'd leave me and, and forget about me. And we talked a couple of weeks after that and she ended up leaving me and said, I'm, I'm going to go. I got to chase my dreams. Uh, I really thought you would support me in this, but you didn't. So I'm going to break up with you and I'm going to go do that. And I remember when she left, that was one of the most painful moments in my life. And I think a lot of people turn to self-improvement and entrepreneurship when they're in pain. I don't know why that is, but that's what happened for me. And I think it does for a lot of people. So I started learning stuff. I started listening to books. I started reading books. I started watching Ted talks. And I said, every night before I went to bed, I would say, I'm talented, I'm handsome, I'm worthy, I'm intelligent. And this year I'm going to make the most money I've ever made in my entire life. And that was really my focus because I assumed if I made more money, my problems would go away. And unfortunately, the next year, I got a promotion at my job and I was a foreman for the construction company I was working at. And uh, we did a lot of work on the road. So the end of that year, I had actually spent the entire 10 months of that year on the road. So mm -hmm. every single week I was living in hotels I was working overnight shifts. I was driving six, seven, eight, 12 hours, depending on where we were working. But I didn't care because I was making a lot of money. I was making good money. So that's all I cared about. So I remember we, we got to the end of the year and I opened up my pay stub and I made $100,000 at 26 with no college degree. And it was another moment where I realized that I was very unhappy, but I was trying to fix it with external things. Mm -hmm. And very shortly thereafter, I thought to myself, well, for most of my life, I have been living unconsciously. What's the opposite of unconscious? Hyperconscious. So I started a podcast called the Hyperconscious Podcast that eventually ballooned into Next Level University. And that is where it all started for me. I, I wanted to have interesting conversations with interesting people. And it definitely grew and grew and grew. And that's where it all started. Yeah, because it's interesting, like you mentioned, the entrepreneurs or business owner turn into into this venture or uh, go into this route because they they feel like there's something missing or they like your girlfriend she wanted to achieve certain things and she basically saw, saw from her own eyes that you did not back her up right this is her vision looked like at, at the same time it gave you opportunity to look at things from your own perspective and start your own thing yeah. So yeah. So 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 is it sometimes that we as people we like to live in this place, the comfort zone? Is we are used to certain things. We like to keep certain things in the same place. Yeah, I think that it's it's an interesting thing, and I think to your point, I think it requires a certain amount of pain to kick you out of the the comfort zone. We call it the pain pleasure pendulum. So I think of it this way. If you go to work on Monday and it is the worst day you have ever had at work and you're thinking, I am going to quit this job. I do not care. I can't be here anymore. One of two things usually happens. One, you quit the job 
that day, or you go, you go home and you wake up Tuesday and Tuesday's a little bit better. Wednesday, you're halfway through the week. Thursday's almost Friday, Friday's Friday. And then the weekend's there. And at that point, the pendulum has swung enough out of pain where you're not willing to make a big, hairy, scary decision. And I think that what that did for me is it pushed me and it forced me to make a big decision. So yeah, I think when you get pushed out of your comfort zone one way into the pain side of things, I think you're willing to lean more into achievement and try to lean in the other direction uh, out of your comfort zone. Yeah. So, so, so getting out of the comfort zone, like if you look at my website, success is great. The slogan is raise your standards. So, so, and I saw one of your episodes is, it's about standards, basically. So should any human being like label standards, put, put a scale from one to 10 or from one to hundred and say, this is my standard is like 100 and I am not going to accept anything less than that. I think that you have to take a good look at, I don't know if you should set a number necessarily, because I think you can always elevate right? You can always get to the next level, which is another standard for you. I think it all starts with the understanding that your standards are often what you accept. So if you can understand, okay, for me, my body, I have a very high standard for the way I want to look. That's not anybody else's. That's what I will accept from myself. So yeah, to your point, I think it's important to say, this is my standard. This is what I must do to uphold my standard. And I want to raise my standard moving forward. What must I do in order to do that? Mm, yeah. So, but that I think relates to, to certain limiting beliefs in us as humans also. So do you think there is a ceiling for that? Because sometimes like if you tell someone to, to go bungee jump, even <laughs> if their life depended on it, they might jump. Some people might jump. Other people will stay in the chopper and say, no, I will take my chances and we'll see if we crash and die or not. So what do you think about that? Yeah. Number one, I'm not getting in a helicopter, Never mind (laughs) bungee jumping. So neither of those (laughs) are going to happen for me. Mm. I think that I don't know that there is a limit. And here's why I say that, because I think I think of it almost like mountain climbing. When you're climbing a mountain, you can usually only see the next peak. If you're at the very bottom, it's very hard to look up and see the very, very, very top of the mountain. And I think of that from confidence and from limiting beliefs as well, where when I started this podcast, I didn't think I could be a podcaster. Okay. That eventually evolved into me saying, well, maybe I could become a speaker. Okay. Let me go try speaking. And it was on a very small stage in front of 50 people. It went better than I expected. And then I said to myself, well, maybe I can do this speaking thing. Then it was, okay, maybe I can speak in front of more people, in front of more people. Then it was, maybe I can be on other people's podcasts. So I think that it depends on how big the limiting belief is. And it depends on if it's a hard no, or uh, that's something I can try and see what happens. So we're, I'm going to get uh, married in Colorado at the end of the month. And my fiance said, Hey, Congratulations, man. thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. My fiance said, I want to go in a hot air balloon. And I said, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I researched it. It's safer than I thought. Okay, I'll do it. So it was a hard no until I realized through breaking down my limiting beliefs that most likely we're going to be fine. She said, well, I also want to go paragliding. So for those who don't know, you throw a parachute on and you kind of jump off the side of a mountain and cruise down. I said, that for me is a hard no. So my current limiting belief will not let me do that. But at one point, I didn't want a hot air balloon either. So I think that it's one of those things where sometimes you got to dip your toe in the water to see what the water is like, and then realize you can go up to your knee, you can go up to your waist, you can go up to your shoulders, and then eventually maybe you can go underwater. Yeah. So so we are talking here about taking one step at a time. So if someone wants to make uh, like a million dollars or 10 million if we are talking about money or whatever it is we're talking about, we should like put some stepping stones for this. Like I want to make, uh, for example, 10K this month or this year and the next year it will evolve. So this is you talking about looking at the mountain and you will know you reach the top, but it will take you certain time. You will not jump ahead. You will need to take the stairs 
one step at a time, right? A hundred percent. A lot of people say, how did you get to a thousand episodes? And I always say one at a time. That's it. I don't, don't look at what we've done and say, well, I want to get there. That's, that's cool. If you do, I love that. And I hope you do, but just worry about the next one or worry about the next 25 and the next 50. I think it, it is, there's a quote, Rome wasn't built in a day. Rome was built every day. Yeah. And that's, that's any level of success. And I think that's a good perspective and mindset to have. Yeah. So in order to do these things, to, to achieve one step every day or to jump one step every day, you need to improve yourself and work on yourself on certain things. So what do you do personally and what do you do with other people do you see with them or when you work with them? What are the things that you improve yourself on and focus on? Yeah. So we, as a business and as a brand and as humans, we break things into health, wealth, and love. So just as an example, every single day from a perspective of health, I exercise at least 30 minutes. I weigh myself and I track my calories. Those three things have a giant impact on your overall fitness and how you look and how you feel. From wealth, I track our finances, our business finances every day. I try to eliminate all non-essential spending. Those are two simple things. And I also try to learn something new. So I have 30 minutes of learning every single day because that'll mm. help us make more money and impact more people. And then from the perspective of love, this is if you're in a relationship, you can do something. If you're single, you can do whatever self-love is. But my fiance and I, before we go to bed every night, we play the gratitude game. So I am grateful for this about you, the way you treated me, you know, dinner or the movies or whatever. And if you're single, you can always say things that you're grateful for about your life. And I think that many people are really good at fitness, but not necessarily fitness and money. And many people are really good at money, but maybe not money and fitness. So our goal is to have a holistic, well-rounded approach to all of it. And I always suggest those examples to people out there. If you do one new thing tomorrow under each of those, weigh yourself, measure your bank account balance, and play the gratitude game with somebody you love, that's a completely different life if you do that for long enough. Yeah, yeah, that, that's important. Like you mentioned, if, if your life is going well on a certain, on financially, for example, it could be struggling health-wise or mm -hmm. vice versa. So stepping stones, working one step at a time at each one, uh, is a good thing because you cannot, like we mentioned, you cannot jump at the top just with one with one uh, step. Yeah. So that that would be huge. Yeah. So do you think there are certain uh, core values or for the human, like you mentioned, the gratitude? Uh, are there certain core values for any human being to to be uh, looking at or doing or like? spiritual things, these kind of things? Yeah, I think it. I think a lot of our core values depends on who we are as human beings and our experiences, but I think gratitude is a huge one. One of the things, like one of my core beliefs, uh, we call it grateful ambition. I'm grateful for everything I have. I'm grateful for the life I have, but I'm also very, very hungry for the future that I want to create. So we call that grateful ambition. That's a core value of mine. I don't want to settle and say, this is good enough. That, that's just not something I want to do. So I think that you have to check in with, okay, what do I ultimately want out of life? And what am I willing to do or not do to get it? If family is a core value, your life is going to look a little bit different than somebody who doesn't have family as a core value. And I think not only will it help you figure out if you're doing the right thing, but it'll also help you figure out if you're doing the wrong thing. If you value family and that's a core value, Maybe you jet setting all over the world giving speeches might not be in alignment with what you actually want. And I think the sooner you realize that, the better off you're going to be ultimately. But I do think it's personal. It depends on where you've come from, your experiences, um, your core ambitions for what you want. But I think if you live a good centered life based on your core values, you will be way more fulfilled than somebody who doesn't for sure. Yeah. So what do you think uh, the best resources for personal development? Do you think Books give uh, people good look on life and experiences from the authors and uh, set people in the right direction, for example. Yeah, I would say books are really good. I love watching YouTube videos, but it's hard because you don't know 
how true somebody is. You don't know if they're telling you the truth. They might be lying about what they've experienced. So you got to be very, very careful with the content that you, you absorb. But yeah, books, I mean, there's so many great personal development, self-improvement, business, self-awareness, entrepreneurial books out there. I love, um, I'm a big fan of John Maxwell, read a lot of Tony Robbins books. Um, Donald Miller has a lot of great books about business made simple and marketing made simple. Simon Sinek's a great author, Brendan Burchard. So I'm a big fan of books. I try to learn every single day, but I also do learn a lot from YouTube as well. You just got to be careful and podcasts too. Yeah. Podcasts are kind of like audiobooks now, so that's a good way to learn as well. Something like this is a great way to learn. Yeah. So as we as we know, do you think that motivation and willpower has to do with success? Because like success could be like we mentioned earlier, it could be different things to different people. As we know, it could be about money, it could be about family, it could be about relationships, whatever. So uh, do you think uh, willpower and motivation is something that Uh, really drives people or do you think there is something more or bigger than these two? I think that if I would say a lot of people rely on motivation and willpower. And I think the problem with that is when they get what they've been working so hard for, you got to find something else, right? I I know somebody who their goal was to make like a hundred thousand dollars in real estate in a, in one deal. And this person ended up making $100,000 in one real estate deal. And he ended up kind of losing himself. And he said, I don't know what to do next. Like, what do I do now? So I think it's one of those things where I try to focus more on inspiration than motivation. Motivation is the motive for action. I think inspiration is you doing something in spirit of something else. Motivation pushes you. Inspiration pulls you. So my thought process around that, my goal is always to help people think about what is the impact and what service are they trying to provide to others? I think that's a completely different thing than I want blank result. And the other part of it is if you set a goal that's so big that you're never going to get it, you'll never really run out of motivation because you're never going to get the goal. So I think you have to tap into that as well. But willpower being drained is definitely a real thing. And I think motivation is fleeting and it's momentary. And I think you have to rely more on why power than almost anything else, because that's what gets you out of bed some mornings when there is no motivation. Yeah, exactly. Like you mentioned, if you have a goal, I have the guest, we talked about goals and there are goals that they they are called the type C goals. These goals are that the goals that anyone you never achieved before, you have never done before, that you have never actually planned even for before. So these are the goals that people should be looking at and doing from my own perspective. Because if you sit, for example, type A goals, which is the goals that we we already know and we have already done before, you as a human being, you are not going to grow. And our, our, we are here as a human, we are, we are here to learn. We are here to grow as a human being. So, your, your point to go goal setting, for example, we have to set the type C goals that we have never done before because this is how we grow. This is how we improve. Yeah, I would say I would add a little bit. I would go a little bit deeper and say, I think the level of your goals can only be a little bit past your level of self-belief because the people oftentimes who set the biggest goals are the people who believe in themselves the most. My business partner, I have never met anybody who believes in themselves as much as that man does. It's, it doesn't make any sense, but he also has massive goals and he's helped me um, set a lot of massive goals as well. So it depends on where your level of self-belief is. If you don't believe you can build a million dollar business, I would say, what do you believe you can build? And if you said, well, I think I could do 100,000, I'd say, okay, why don't we try for 200,000 then? I think sometimes people are guilty, and myself included, of setting goals that don't seem achievable, Mm. right? Like I I like the big audacious goals. I do, as long as you have the self-belief to back it up and also the understanding that you're going to have to formulate the strategy to get there. I think goal setting is very important. I think goal strategizing is just as important. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. You, you, you have to put, like we talked about, you have to push yourself and go, go out of your comfort zone and have a standard because that will make you achieve certain things on a higher level. So speaking of that, do you think there is a difference between self-worth and self-belief or are they the same? It's a very challenging conversation because a lot of, a lot of times it seems like they're the same. I believe that self-worth is the way you value yourself as a human being. So um, I am not good, therefore I'm not good at anything. Or I am not good, therefore I am not worthy. Where I think self-belief is I believe or I don't believe that I can accomplish this goal. So I think self-belief is ambition. And I think self-worth is your relationship with yourself. And usually what happens with self-worth is oftentimes something will happen when you're a child or you're younger or your parents aren't there for you or whatever it may be that creates some sort of void. And the problem with low self-worth is it often attracts more low self options or low self-worth options in. So I think that self-worth is way more, I feel blank about myself because of blank. And I think self-belief is I believe I can accomplish blank based on this belief I have. So I think they're very similar, but a l- different in a lot of ways. It's a very, it's a very tough line to, to draw and stay on. Yeah. So you mentioned people or relatives or parents. So speaking of self-belief, sometimes those people who are around us, family, friends, or whatever, they affect our opinion and they, they could be positive thoughts, sometimes, sometimes negative. So how do you see or how, what would you say to people on, on to dealing with that, especially if it's uh, on the negative side of things, how to deal with that if there are people around them, if they set a goal, for example, to themselves and people around them telling them, oh, no, you can't achieve that. So how, yeah. how do you think they can deal with that? There's a couple of different ways. So I always start by saying this is a question you should ask yourself and It's a difficult question and it brings up a lot of challenging answers, but are the people in your life the best from your past or the best for your future? A lot of us have people in our lives because they've always been in our lives. We went to high school, we went to college, we used to work together, we used to go to the gym together, whatever it may be. I care more about how somebody will help me accomplish my impact into the future. So that is a question I always tell people to ask. I think it's this simple. It's very hard. We did an episode on this today, as a matter of fact. It's very hard for somebody to believe in you if they don't believe in themselves. So if somebody comes to you and says, I want to start a podcast that's going to change the world, that's pretty rare. It's a very rare thing to happen. I try now, and I was not this enlightened at the beginning, but I try very hard to have empathy for the fact that they might just be afraid I'm going to fail. They might just be trying to protect me. So I think there's a couple different times, right? Or a couple different types. Some people are afraid you're going to get hurt. Some people are afraid you're going to leave them behind. Some people just want to see you lose. So I think the, the piece of advice depends on where that's coming from. But if it's people that want to see you lose, I would say, why are you even in those relationships? Can family relationships be strained because of goals and dreams and businesses? Absolutely. I think you have to have the honest honest conversation. Are you willing to trade in your goals for your family? I know it's challenging. I know it's it's a difficult thing to do, but I think it's it's worth having that conversation. If people don't just don't believe in you because they don't believe in themselves, I would say try to have empathy. Try to have empathy. Even in my story, I told you that my my ex girlfriend wanted to move across the country, and I didn't believe in her. It's not that I was trying to consciously stop her from accomplishing her goals. I just didn't think she could do it. And I was afraid of being left behind. And Mm. I'm grateful I had that experience because it taught me a lot. Now I can look at it from a different perspective. But if somebody's just being negative, I would consider trying to reallocate time and space with them. If somebody just doesn't know better and they're afraid you're going to fail, I think you just have to communicate with them why it's so important for you and try to have empathy for their lack of awareness maybe. Yeah, you, you mentioned fear. So why do you think some of us fear success? Uh, though it, it shouldn't be the case if, if success, as we mentioned, success is defined by the person itself, whether it's financial, whether it's relationship, whatever, or health or wealth or whatever. So 
why sometimes there is this unconscious belief that we are not good enough, we are unworthy of this success, we are not worthy of this kind of money. Why does that, does that happen to us when we are when we are thinking like even on paper you put it like uh, I want to make for example like you mentioned a million dollars a year for example or a month or whatever. So wh why does that happen to people and get afraid to succeed? Yeah, I think it's there's many reasons. Number one, I think it's a lot of conditioning. When you're if you're told you can't, you can't, you won't. So you're not smart enough. You're not fast enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not a good enough speaker. You don't know math well enough. That's going to set conditioning up that you're going to have to knock down for the rest of your life. But one of the most common reasons I have seen, there's really two. Number one, the fear of losing people around them. When you start growing, so if you want to make a million dollars, just say a million dollars a month, who will you have to become in order to make that much money, you're going to have to become somebody who's very dialed in with their schedule. You're going to have to impact a lot of people. You're probably going to have to work a lot for the most part. I think there's that subconscious belief that I don't know if Hussein will want to be friends with me anymore. If I'm always working and I never answer my phone and when he texts me, I don't text him back. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep my relationships and the level of success I want. I think that's one part. I think the other part is people subconsciously don't know if their character can handle success. When you look at somebody like a Justin Bieber or somebody who is a very young actor or actress, they get very successful very fast. And usually something goes wrong in their life because they didn't have the opportunity to build their character up. I believe that if you focus on achieving and sustaining your success, whatever that means, you're more likely to build up your character. And I think that's where a lot of people are afraid. They're afraid that they're going to get found out. They're afraid that it's going to get harder as they continue to go. And we were broke for three years and there was not much to do. So we were really, really working on our characters. And that's something that I'm very proud of now. And I think that has definitely helped me lean into the fact that I'm not really afraid of success. I, I was way more afraid of failure than anything else. Success never really scared me that much. <laughs> So I actually tweeted a tweet a while ago saying that success is happiness. Do you agree with that? I think success is fulfillment. I think happiness is very uh, results-based. So I always use this example. If my interview with you goes well, I will be happy. After this, I'll give myself a pat on the back and I'll say strong work. Okay, cool. On to the next thing. No matter what happens, I am in the process of doing something I love. I am fulfilled. So the process of this, I am enjoying it. I'm in enjoyment of this, but I'm also fulfilled. So I think happiness is more results-driven, results-based, where fulfillment is you being in alignment on the mission that you're supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's a bigger umbrella, I would say, fulfillment is. Than yes. Yeah, I actually like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a really cool new twist perspective on things actually yes i will tweet that again <laughs> you can steal it it's all yours it's all yours my friend so do you think that i have missed something about talking about success do you think that you can add something to it to our conversation here hmm i would just talk about the power of consistency hmm. i believe that uh and we did we touched on that but i mean so much can happen in a couple of years. I think that many of us fall into this trap, and I, I definitely lived here for a while. We don't see where somebody started. We only see where somebody is. We don't see where we can go. We only see where we are. And it doesn't work that way. You have to, you have to understand that if you're comparing to where somebody is five years into the journey and you just started, you still got five years to catch up. So that's what I would say. The power of consistency in really playing the long game. You don't have to win today. You don't have to win tomorrow. What you should be focused on is building a foundation of something that can live forever. I think that is something that is very, very valuable and definitely something that I wish I knew earlier on because I didn't realize how long this game was going to be. And now that I, I do realize I can, I can play differently, I can live differently, everything's a, a little bit different now. Yeah, uh, consistency is very important. It's, it turns you to a high achiever, mm -hmm. and uh, will you will eventually be a success, whether it's 
with the time frame is a year, five years, like you mentioned earlier. The problem is with people now is that we want like instant gratification, like yeah. we want everything now, like uh, I want it now. So that, that the life does not happen like that. Athletes, the Michael Jordans of the world, they when we used to see them taking these shots, they practice like a thousand, five, maybe I don't know, maybe five thousand times a day uh, to, yeah. to to make that shot live on a game. So yep. yeah, it, it takes consistency and it takes time. It takes time for it. Yeah, yeah. You usually exactly. what what goes up fast comes down fast, right? Yeah. Like. If, if I was getting, if I was walking into a skyscraper and they said, Hey, take the elevator. It, it, we got it in today. It only took us like 12 minutes to get it in. It's like, I don't know if I want to take that elevator. I want to take the elevator. It took a couple of years to build because I, at least I think it's a little bit safe and the foundation is a little bit stronger. If it goes up fast, it usually goes down fast too. <laughs> well, what would you say? What take away for this episode, uh, Kevin? I would say we touched on this. I would say the biggest difference between the person you are today and the person you want to be in the future is your habits. So make sure you're, you're living your habits in a positive way when it comes to health, when it comes to wealth, and when it comes to love. In five years, your life will be a result of the habits that, you, that you've been practicing for the, for the last five years. So make sure the habits are positive and they're driving you in the direction you want to go. Awesome. So Kevin, where can people get in touch with you? If you want to listen to our podcast, we are Next Level University. We're on all the podcast platforms as well as YouTube, seven episodes a week. We just crossed our thousandth episode recently. And if you want to reach out to me directly, the best place to do it is Instagram. My handle is at neverquitkid. Awesome. Well, thank you for being here today with me on this episode, Kevin, and awesome to have you here. Well, I appreciate you, my friend. This was wonderful. Awesome.